Hello and welcome back. I think many of us will recognise this image as the cover of the 1977 Hornby catalogue. I remember this one as a child very well. Now let's just have a look at page number eight. Now this is the year that Hornby first introduced their um, model of British Railways brand new high speed passenger train. Just look at that. You'd have been very lucky to get that set, wouldn't you? Now it came along as um, R685 and to buy it as a solo model, just dummy and power car together, you'd have to wait till the following year. We've got the components of the set there. Interesting to see battery controller still being included with the System 6 track, of course, and a, and a lovely cardboard tunnel by the looks of it. We'll just pop this to one side. Now the, uh, the dummy and the power car sold as a set by itself, came along 78, I think, and lasted until um, 1980 when it was replaced by a three car set. So if we just have a look at this wonderful image here, and it says, artist's impression of prototype. Interesting label here, right across the image. Units are intended for use with intermediate vehicles. If we have a look around the box, we can see a variety of tape has been used to try and hold the thing together. It's seen some action, hasn't it? So the model's not pristine. It's definitely been used a bit. Let's have a look at the end of the box here. So as this two car set, it was RO69 HST power stroke dummy power cars. Interesting pricing here, isn't it? It's hard to work out whether the, the price has been increased or, or decreased. Great dealer name on it there. Let's see if we can, we can just encourage this out of the packaging here for a moment. Let's see, we've got sort of parcel tape on the inside as well. It's a well-worn box, polystyrene inserts. Just encourage that out. Excuse the noise of the polystyrene on the cardboard. And then we have paperwork there for 79. And we'll just pop that to one side there. And we'll just pop these down. So we've got the old instruction maintenance sheet here, fairly general sheet. And we, we've seen these before, so we will not go to town on this. And there's the, the model number here, RO69. And we've got uh, second of the second, 79. I'll just pop that to one side. And I think we have the, the power car here. I won't get them out of the packaging. We'll just have a, a swift look at them like this. See, lovely models. They've definitely had a bit of handling and a bit of wear over the time, and they've definitely been around the track a little. So we'll pop that one down. That's the, the power car. And then we'll have a, a swift look at the dummy. And there she is. Of course, this had directional lighting for the, for the extra play value. If we just have a look at the headlighting there, the, the, the little piece doesn't quite go in into the model quite nice, as nicely as it could on, on both units. So let's see if we can just pop this out, out of the tray for a second. I know I said I wasn't going to get it out, but let's have a look at one, one of the models. See, we've got that lovely roof detail there. All sprayed up in black. Yellow area sprayed up, and I believe this is probably molded in blue plastic and then sprayed up in yellow and black. So that yellow works not quite as um, neat and tidy as it could be. Lovely window wiper on the cover there. You can see what I mean about those uh, headlamp covers, not quite as neat and tidy as you might expect. So it is a mass produced item. We've got these great big holes in the side of the model where the chassis clips in. We'll just have a, a swift look at the back end there. So it is a, a lovely thing, isn't it? I'll just pop that one down. And we'll just see, whilst we're here, see if I can get the, the motor one out. I know I said I wasn't going to, but that one came out quite successfully. There we go. Sometimes they're a bit hesitant at coming out and they make an awful noise with the polystyrene. Let's have a look at the, the underside of this one. This is the, the motor bogey. You can see we've got two traction tyres there. You can see it's done a fair bit of time on the track. We've got a little bit of wear through the plating on the wheels. Very exciting to receive one of these, I imagine. And here we are at the station, all ready to go. We'll just have a, a look down the train before we get underway. 
The problem with this group of models is it makes up such a very long train for my layout, it sort of barely fits in the station. We'll just look right the way down there. Really does look quite impressive though, doesn't it? And we're gonna see the power car is sticking right out of the front end of the station, unfortunately. We've got the English electric sitting there, looking terrific under that lamp. And then just on the right frame there, we've got the EM2 just coming into shot. I'm gonna swing around the front and have a look. I think that's a, a lovely group of models just sitting there. We'll just open points 11 there and we'll bring this group of models out onto the inside line. Not too much of a glow from the headlamps at the moment running at this low speed, but a terrific noise as all of those metal wheels cross over the point work. Switch those points behind them and off around the layout. Lovely reflection of the uh, signals in the side of the carriages there. Just imagine this rolling around the, the living room, emerging from around the corner of the sofa with the headlamps glowing. Absolutely terrific stuff, I think and we'll bring her gently to a stop, just alongside the station here. I've just removed the bodies from both, both of the chassis so we can have a swift look inside. If you have a look at the insert picture, you can see how lovely and smooth that motor runs. And we've got the, the lighting there at the front. You can see how that works, very simple piece of light, wiring here. We've got the bulb there, just held in place by these two pin connectors there. And uh, we've got the diode there to control the directional lighting. Very important feature of this model. We've got this great big weight here, giving it a very low center of gravity, sorry. And uh, dare I say it, I think that adds to the it's this model's ability to run at quite high speeds on your model railway. And that, of course, that is lots of play value for, for those of us who, who have a mind to do that. I think that is just a, a wonderfully simple design there. We'll just have a swift look around the other side. And we see the other side of the motor there. Lovely detailing on the bogies. We'll have a swift look underneath and what we've got there. Made in Great Britain and Hornby. Terrific looking thing. Let's have a, have a swift look at the, the dummy. Let's pop that down there for a moment. So here we've got the chassis for the, the dummy car. We've got the, uh, the diode here to control the directional lighting. Very simple affair, but you can see it's it's the it's the same unit, isn't it? Minus the motor. Ingenious design, I think. I think they were very clever with this. It uh, must have made them quite a bit of money, I think, over over the years. We'll, we'll just pop that one down. We'll have a, a look inside of one of the bodies. So. Great colour. I believe the colour variations on this changed somewhat over the years. The fitment of these um, headlight covers is a little bit cruder, so a little bit proud of the bodywork. They could have been slightly better fitted, I think, if you have a look inside. You can see there they're protruding through the inside there, and that will pick up the light and transfer it into the, the plastic piece at the front there and give us dual headlights. Really, really. Very, very clever, I think. Window wiper molded into the glazing unit there. Glazing unit just, just glued in. And that glazing unit on the back there, again, just glued into place. And we do have some numbering down here. So if look, we'll turn that over. And we have RO70-010. I think RO70 was originally the, the number for the dummy, the dummy car and the RO69 for the power car, although this set was sold, as we've seen as a RO69 as a two car set. And lovely looking thing. I suppose we should have a swift look inside the other one. There we go. Nice and clean and tidy. Slight mark there from the wiring. I think that's an interaction of the two types of plastic where they don't get along with each other. And again, all, all very tidy. And this one's got some heat stamped numbers in the bottom there. I can't quite make those out. Is it three, zero and an eight perhaps? It's quite, quite difficult to see. And again, you can see that's just been either glued or clipped in. I thought that was glued, but now I'm looking, I, I think it maybe it's clipped in. And there's another, another part number on there, isn't there? Great, great things. Lots of play value to be had from these models. Just moving away from the station now, 
we're going to run around the inside line again, but this time we're going to come across points number seven with the crossover onto the outside line. We'll, we'll be able to turn up the power a little and see if we can get those headlamps to glow a little more. Just listen to that beautiful sound. And then we'll switch the points there and through she goes. Fairly well behaved. I'm always amazed that these slightly newer models run quite so well on this course track work. Now, just think with the third radius curve and up the incline, turn up the power there by those headlights. Don't they look great? I imagine we should try and get this model running in the dark, perhaps on a, on a different video on another day, I think. Absolutely terrific. Very striking model, isn't it? I believe Hornby still make versions of this today. There's been many, many versions over the years from what I've read. Lovely shot now, coming directly towards camera. Just listen to the sound. And here are a couple of intermediate vehicles, as it hints to on the box there. So your train set originally would have come with one of these uh, open seconds, R439, available 77 to 79. And then from uh, 80 to 85 in, in a paint finish. And I think the model number for that changed to 426. I know we've got uh, oh, 428 there, Mark III first coach, sorry. And uh, that came along in 79, so it was a bit of a wait for the first class coach. And again, in, in 80 to 84, this became a paint finished model. And I believe the, the catalogue number of that changed to 425. So we'll just have a, a swift look around the boxes. They're in fairly tidy condition. Nice bright red, Hornby Railways all over them, and a lovely stripe. They look great on the shelves of the toy shop, these. I remember these as a child, seeing these boxes in toy shops. So we'll pop them down and we'll uh, we'll have a have a look at the uh, the uh, open second there. Now this would have come with the train set originally. Now in the boxes, they come, they come with some uh, transfers or rub down stickers for, for the running numbers. So they're still present with this one. They've never been fitted. If you look here, we've got two zeros on the side. We'll have a closer look at that one and get it out of the box. But let's just have a look at this sheet. It's become quite fragile over the years. So we've got a variety of uh, running numbers. I think that's the back side of it there. So we've seen those in reverse. So these coaches could be used for, uh, for other things. So that's why other, other locomotives could pull them. So we've got buffers with them, um, which could be fitted separately. So they wouldn't have been used when they're in intercity service. But that's quite nice to find those. Again, it's very, very fragile. If you look at the back side again, you can just see the, the numbering in reverse there. So I'll just pop those to one side. Have a swift look at the, the bag with the buffers in there. So those would just be pushed into the into holes left in the moulding at the end of the bodywork. We'll have a look at those in a second. So we'll just ease this one out of the box. There we go, we'll just pop the, the box down there. Great looking coach. I think they made a few of these. Lovely detailing on the end. And you see that uh, strip that runs down here. I think they they just changed the strips and the rest of the body stayed the same to get different coaches out of it to get the uh, the first and the, the uh, buffet car when it came along in there. There is the holes in the end there. So if you were running with different locomotives, you could use these coaches for, for, for a different application. Quite a, quite a clever idea. I don't, I don't imagine that uh, the buffers stayed with the coaches very often or the um, the transfers could have got lost or if they haven't been fitted and there there is that zero zero and i believe you're supposed to line up the zero zero on the trunk on the uh, rub down number over that zero zero to get them in in the correct position and it's a reasonably complicated task maybe for, for a, a child to do clipping bogies and silver seal wheels they make a terrific noise on, on the track Lovely bit of under frame detail there. So we'll pop this one down and we'll just uh, pop out the first class coach and have a quick look over it. So excuse me while I uh, open up the end of the box. There we go. And again, we've got uh, rub down transfers and, and buffers 
we'll just put those to one side. I put those in a separate bag because they were rolling around. There wasn't a there wasn't a bag for the buffers in this box. They were just floating freely on the box. Very lucky to have uh, got them before they vanished, I suppose. So we'll get that extra flap open there. And then out she comes. There we go. It's a pretty good thing, isn't it? First, Intercity. I did notice, though, that the, the size of the, the lettering for Intercity is significantly different. It's a great looking things. And I believe they've got other coaches, as I say, out of these mouldings by changing these uh, these window window strips. They slightly raised the edges for the windows around there, but they don't appear to be painted up separately at this stage. Let's have a swift look around. Fairly tidy condition, and it has done some running. Again, it's got those lovely silver seal wheels, clipping bogies. Uh, what have we got on the bottom there? We're upside down, we'll look it around the other way. Made in England, Hornby, and then we've got a catalog number here. R 439, which of course is the uh, the catalogue number for for the open second to start with. So we've got many coaches out of the same chassis and, and basic side mouldings and roofs. A trick that uh, Triang and Triang Hornby have uh, perfected over the years, I think. You'd have had to wait till 1980 for the restaurant buffet car to arrive. This was available between 80 and 87, and I believe she was issued with a number of different uh, running numbers, possibly the catalogue number R427 changed over that period as well. BR Intercity Coach, Mark III, Buffet 125. And I've mentioned before, I'm not very keen on this uh, particular colouring or packaging that Hornby switched to at this period in time. I think it's particularly unimpressive and really doesn't stand out on the shelving. So we'll open up the box, it's not in quite as tidy condition as it all. You can see the cellophane's just coming away on the inside there. It's going to make a terrible sound as we, as we take it out of the packaging here. Let's just squeeze the sound for a second. Quite a lovely thing. Slightly different colour. As I say, I think it's probably painted rather than uh, a, uh, a moulded plastic colour. Different window strip in there to get the, the restaurant buffet effect. Different uh, interior seating moulding as well. Lovely line across the top there indicating food available. And we do have slightly different roof detail to the other coaches. If I just hold on up so you can see, see the difference there. So we'll have a look underneath and I think we're going to find that she's got the, the same numbering as the, uh, the standard open coach, same class. Hornby, made in England, and there's that catalogue number again, R439, the, the original open second uh, coach which came with the sets back in 77. So we can see she could have had buffers. I'm not sure whether she was issued with them or whether they've just vanished from the box. But uh, certainly uh, got the facility to put them in if we ever wanted to. And we're just going to come through points number five from the uh, outside line onto the passing loop there and if you just watch the dummy power car she just jumps a little on that particular point there as she comes through the crossover i haven't had any trouble with any of the other point work when i've been running her today but I'll have a closer look at that later now right, she comes along along the line towards us there you can see the the coaches rising and falling the warping in the baseboard there has become quite severe i think we'll have to go with uh, plywood next time Points just changing there, and we'll bring them smoothly through back onto the outside line and see just how shiny these coaches are. Now, from what I've read, this wasn't the most accurate group of models ever made, but I really don't think that matters. If you think of the sort of target market these were made for back in the, the mid 70s, I think they've done a really good job. I think they've brought many hours of uh, enjoyment to. Uh, both children and, uh, and adults alike. Now, if you could see the smile on my face when I'm running these around here, you'd, you'd know just what I mean. And I think uh, a number of you perhaps have this group of models as well, and you'll know exactly what I mean. Just look at that. I mean, you can't help but enjoy this. Now, 
Ian B suggested that I make a video with uh, this group of models. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It was a real pleasure to play with these models over, over the last few days. I've had absolutely terrific time with a great profile, isn't it? Just look at this. She goes off into the distance. A great yellow, blue and grey streak running across that bridge there. It really is great fun. There are a number of sets made over the years and many variations in this group of models, I think. But, uh, too many to go into. But I think that's probably it today. Thank you so much again for watching. It really is hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the, from the uh, range to look at. I'll just leave you with the, this group running around the layout for a moment or two now. Thanks again. Goodbye now.